Hi guys. Okay, let's talk about campaign structure. I will be sharing most important things about structuring your campaigns for growth and, and control. Most of the times you will have uh, good results, but lacking proper campaign structure in order to be able to scale and to control your spend. So I'll be, I'll be going through several examples, mentioning how to structure your auto campaigns, how to structure your manual campaigns, how many keywords per campaigns, per latest um, best practices, etc., etc. So stay tuned. I'm sure that all of you are going to find uh, that you're missing out on these important steps. Okay, let's start by having, um, this is an example of auto campaign. So um, pretty good results, I would say, but notice this. So in this campaign, you have 111 products. Now that may be okay in some cases where you want to, um, sorry about that, test which products are converting better, but you won't, won't definitely want to include uh, tens or 20 or 100 products in, in it. Uh, that could be useful, for example, if, if you have some variations of family of products and you want to test for a limited amount of time, which one of them is actually converting the best, the best click-through rate, the best conversion rate, and then you want to leave only that one uh, in the ads. Um, so why is it uh, a problem? Uh, in this particular example, and you can relate to that, is you when you have 100 different products in one uh, auto campaign, uh, no matter how, um, how sophisticated Amazon algorithm, algorithm is, you're gonna, you're gonna end up by having multiple search terms for multiple multiple products and even though that it's going to have a, a solid result so here you can see almost 30 uh 30 ROAS on, on on this campaign but you cannot control the spend you cannot control what's happening over there um so really um pay attention to having only a limited number of products per auto campaign Similar goes to to manual campaign, but more on the, on that terms later. Additional very common mistake is having uh, all targeting types in one campaign. This is also an auto campaign, so you can see uh, close match, loose match, substitutes, and complements all in the same ad group. Um, one of the reasons uh, why is that bad, bad practice is that you cannot control the budget. Budget can be controlled only on a, on a, sorry, on a, on a campaign level. Meaning, uh, if you assign to this campaign uh, $100 per day, you can't control is it going to go to the close match, loose match, substitutes or complements. So what you would have to do, in, in a, the best scenario that I like to use is have separate campaign per match type. So one auto campaign, close match, one auto campaign, loose match, one for substitutes, one for complements, and the same, obviously the same ads or products inside every campaign. That will enable you to, to carefully control the, the spending. For example, if you wanna, um, here, for example, you wanna push close match, if you, but if you increase the spend on this campaign, it's gonna spend also on sub substitutes and it's different ACoS, it's a different uh, conversion rate, so you have to be careful with that. Um, yeah, another point is that you cannot control placements when you have all the match types in one campaign. Take a look at this. So this is the placement tab, uh, an optimized placement tab, as I mentioned in, the, in one of the previous videos, how to optimize placement by modifying bid adjustments for certain placements in order to maximize your conversion rate and performance. Here you can see that not, not that it's not optimized, but you can see that um, four match types all have in common this type of performance on various for, for top of search for rest of search and product pages. Now, because the, these numbers are very good, you can think that, yeah, well, Igor, you're talking bullshit because it doesn't matter. The, the, the performance is awesome. But let's 
break it down to the conversion rate. For example, exact same date range, exact same uh, campaign. So this is when you export another conversion rate. So top of search, 30% conversion rate, then 19%, then 15%. Uh, even uh, a slight change in conversion rate, like 1% can uh, mean a, a huge difference in profits and revenue, not to mention 30 and 1915. So um, if you go ahead and modify only uh, uh, modify placement adjustments uh, without changing the restructuring of your campaigns, just add, for example, 100% of um, top of search or 200, whatever, uh, placement adjustment for, for top of search, you, you cannot predict which out of the four match types which are together uh, will be impacted the most. So you are really experimenting too much about that. So really something that you need to avoid. So um, just to recap for other campaigns, uh, each match type in its own campaign and really only a limited number of products grouped by the family uh, in, in ads. And later on, you would, you would uh, want to have to isolate only the best performing ones, especially um, if they are variated. Okay, what we want to be covering next. So let's go to manual campaigns, similar to what we saw in um, auto campaigns, same goes with the manual campaign. So this is an example where you have multiple uh, match types in one campaign. Similar issues, similar outcomes. So also you cannot control placements. You cannot control what's happening. When you go to the search terms, it's going to be chaos. So um, if you try to modify, again, placements, you, 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 don't need, you don't know how it's going to perform for exact match for, broad, uh, for phrase or broad. Maybe broad's going to go crazy on top of search and spend ridiculous amounts of money. So it really... Uh, you don't have any control of what's happening. Uh, also, uh, yeah, you should be also doing the same with, with the manual campaign. So focus, for example, if you're selling, selling clothing, so you don't want to have one manual campaign um, with together jackets, jeans, sweaters, or T-shirts. Uh, you want to keep your campaigns as relevant as possible. So relevant keywords, lever, le relevant ads, relevant headlines, if, if you're doing sponsor brands or sponsor display, relevant images. So you don't, you don't, don't want to be creating sponsor brand uh, campaign with a custom image with a sweater if you're going to advertise in jeans in it. So that's going to be awful. Um, another point that's worth mentioning is that uh, you don't want to be neglecting match types in your account uh, well typically yeah if you go ahead and just create a bunch of sponsor products exact match campaigns you're going to have the best control but the cpc is going to be different typically it's higher on on exact match um, and you only have a small exposure on, on those exact uh, terms with, with slight variations as amazon changed recently the exact match same as Google did 10 years ago. So uh, you, you don't want to be missing out on phrase match. Phrase match uh, typically can have lower CPCs, much bigger, much bigger reach. Uh, broad, if used wisely, can be a, a, a great option for you. So really don't neglect using other match types. Another common thing that I keep hearing, a question I, I keep hearing is how many keywords per campaign, how many key per, keywords uh, per campaign. So, um, for example, I keep hearing that, hey, I can have 100 of campaigns, there is a limit of 1,000 campaign, uh, keywords per campaign, uh, etc. Yeah, you can have 100 keywords per campaign, similar as, as, uh, as uh, this example. Uh, so 87 keywords here. So what can happen really, really um, often is that you, you will have, since the budget is controlled on campaign level, you will have high volume keywords, um, two or three of them, maybe even one of them, draining all the budget. And rest of the keywords just going to hang in there. So 
they'll occasionally be having impressions and few clicks now and there, but not enough for you to have enough data what's happening because uh, the main keyword is going to drive all the traffic. So really, um, it's not about the number of keywords. It's about um, grouping together. You, you, you can go, for example, with, a, uh, let's say, 30 or 50 keywords in a campaign if they are all long tail keywords uh, with similar search volume. So you can group all of those if they are similar in, 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 in roots and in semantics. Um, but for example, I have, a, I, have one, I have one example for you. So here, this is only three keywords per campaign. You would say, hey, it's perfect, but take a look at this. So for the last 30 days, this is the spend $4,400 uh, this campaign spent. And all of that went for the single keyword, uh, sorry, one keyword uh, out of three. So the, the rest of the two, one has 76 impressions, one click in 30 days and the other one, even with a high bid, really, really nothing. So a perfect example for you guys. So make sure to, if a keyword is highly relevant, key, highly relevant keyword, have it uh, as a single keyword um, in a campaign. Uh, separate match types so single keyword campaign exact single keyword campaign phrase and single keyword campaign in broad match type um okay yeah additional tip for me would be using um several tiers of our campaigns what that means so um you can have one let's call it general our campaign we with your uh match type separated per each campaign uh, with the bid that's going to be um, uh, that's going to generate enough traffic and, and sales, but you you can also go ahead and be and go even more granular. So, for example, if your uh, average bid on that main uh, our campaign is let's say one dollar, you go ahead and create uh, several iterations of our campaigns. So, our campaigns to catch, for example. Uh, a bid range of 50 to 70 cents, then another one 20 to uh, 30 to 50, and the lowest one 10 to 30 or so. You, you know what I mean. So by doing that, uh, you're going to be um, winning a bidding auction on the second page, on the third page. Yeah, it's going to be low volume, but every sale that you land there is going to have like, zero point something I got. So it's worth having that and it's not going to cost you almost anything. Yeah. Also important thing regarding uh, structuring your campaigns is have defensive campaigns, both sponsor display and sponsor products. What that actually means. Yeah. You go ahead and create sponsor product campaign uh, and in ads, you target your products and in targets, add your own products. What's going to happen is that I've went on and, uh, type the, the skinny jeans here and I uh, ended up on Levis uh, for men. And you can see here, here's their um, listing. And you can see that Enzo is killing them with the with, with the with their attacking campaign. So uh, sponsor display here, sponsor products here. So what you wanna be doing is bid on your own listings and here it's a great opportunity to upsell your products. So for example, if you're selling a um, very known pair of jeans and you have a, a new uh, new one com coming out so you can upsell or for example, you can, if these are slightly dark jeans, you can put a t-shirt here that we, that, that's going to show a combination with the actual jeans uh, so you can go crazy with ideas but the point is uh, it's better for you to spend money on your own product listings and show up on these uh, spaces over here um, yeah so that's really important to have but also sponsor display plus sponsored products campaigns um, yeah, and for last thing I'm going to be mentioning, I don't want this to be a too long video for you, is very uh, often topic on cannibalization. So, so for example, if you are organically ranked position one, are you going to want to bid on that same keyword and appearing on sponsored um, rank number one or two or three? 
or four. Um, so the point is, how do you want to look at it? Are you going to look at it from the profit perspective? Like, hey, I wanna, don't want to be bidding on the keyword and that I'm already winning uh, on organically. But what if you uh, take a different approach and see, for example, OK, you don't want to be bidding on your top uh, keyword or uh, but somebody else will. So, for example, Lev is here. If they don't bid on their um, most important keyword, branded or not, um, somebody else will. So there's going to be people clicking on the position one because uh, typically uh, advertisers uh, are not watching the typical behavior of the uh, average consumer and just uh, thinking about the Nobody want to click that and want to click the, the organic one. So, yeah, so my suggestion is that you should be bidding on every possible uh, placement that you want to, uh, that, that, that's available to you, uh, just to take up uh, as much as of uh, ad real estate as possible. Okay, yeah, I hope that you find this useful. Let me know if you need any further explanation on this, didn't want to bother you too much. So yeah, see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.